Well, looks like the crypto markets are gonna collapse from here. Volumes are low. The Binance FUD is still going on. And today, let's talk a little bit about the crypto market. And then let's talk about who's gonna get hit most with this incoming depression. And I know a lot of the mainstream media is acting like, well, there might be a recession as if we're not already in a recession. Um, but that's not the case. So obviously the numbers have been skewed. So let's talk about the crypto market a little bit. Uh, volumes, you know, obviously are not looking good in some respects and it just looks very, very weak. And, you know, whether it's people that are these chartologists that, you know, look at the charts and look at the moving averages and all that kind of stuff. They don't like what they're seeing on that end of stuff. I don't go by that. Obviously I go by more of the kind of macro view of the boom and bust cycle if I am looking at a chart. Uh, but that being said, it doesn't look good there either. And where's the money coming from? You know, obviously confidence is broken from a lot of the big money. And a lot of people you know, we're struggling to pay for Christmas gifts and struggling to pay, buy food and uh, struggling to pay for gas and to heat their house and all that kind of stuff going in. Obviously, some of these winter storms and stuff coming up and um, both in the U.S. and Europe. So where's the money going to come from? You know, this is the first time that cryptocurrencies is, is kind of seen this. Now, if you're buying, don't get me wrong, I'm bullish on a long term projection and if you're buying right now your dollar cost averaging in as long as you can hold for two or three years you're going to be okay you're going to be safe you're going to be okay if you're you know obviously protecting your assets and keeping on a hardware wallet or you know do, doing what you're doing and spreading everything out now if you're going to do limit orders people have asked me this what exchange would you suggest if it even makes sense to do limit orders to kind of catch some of these falling knives. And I would say that the one fiat gateway that I trust the most would be Kraken. It would be Kraken. And, um, you know, I, I feel like, you know, it's likely safe. But again, if you're gonna do limit orders, maybe spread it around. Maybe you have some on something like Bitrix. You have some on Kraken. Maybe a little bit on, you know, Coinbase. You know, Coinbase stock has really taken a hit. And it's hard to say what what kind of issues that'll lead to a company that's publicly traded running into issues so it's yet to be seen best to keep your funds off the exchange obviously as we've said before uh, and continue to say and we'll repeat ourselves and people will make the same mistake over and over again some of the funds from Quadriga CX started to move if you remember that exchange was a Canadian exchange that collapsed back in 2018 and it was just basically operated like a Ponzi scheme. And then the dude, you know, supposedly went over to Europe. There's a, or he went over to India. There's a documentary on Netflix. So I don't really want to spoil it. It's pretty good. Uh, just look up Bitcoin on Netflix. And there's, there's a documentary about Quadriga CX. I remember when it collapsed, I was over in Thailand. And um, it was just yet another one to add to the, to the pile. Mount Gox, Cribsty, Big Grail, Cryptopia, Moolah, you know, Quadriga CX, FTX. This is going to keep happening. Celsius, BlockFi, just throw them all in there. Um, so that's going to keep happening, guys. Uh, the, the Litecoin play is still, still in play. You know, I think we do have a run with that, but we're going to have some capitulation moves. If you don't have money to buy crypto right now, I honestly wouldn't even sweat it. You're going to have plenty of time to take positions. There's going to be another opportunity. And, you know, you're going to have a solid year plus. I mean, this this economic situation that we're in, it is not going to get better anytime soon. And it is going to collapse every single market. I see crypto going down further, really getting pressed out. A lot of these projects are going to go bankrupt. There are a lot of them already have, but a lot of, and then a lot of developers are just going to have to refocus their efforts on something else just can't keep just working on something and uh not making any money you know for years on end the well run dry the well runs dry at some point 
Now that being said, who's gonna get hit most by this economic depression that's coming up? And why do I think it's an economic depression that's coming up? Well, I guess the average loan price for vehicles is like $40,000. You know, they were handing them away like Halloween candy back in 2020 when everything went on lockdown. And um, so a lot of people got cars then, you know, no money down, 120 days, no interest, no payments, you know, that kind of stuff. And uh, for a minute, it was like, okay, if they would have like maybe gotten out of those cars, they would have been okay. Continued forward maybe with that vehicle. And then now the whole market has changed. Their job situation maybe has changed. Everything has changed. Uh, a lot of repos, rack it up. Car market's changing, guys. So you have the car market imploding. You have consumer debt at all time highs as far as credit card debt. Then you have the housing market where compared to 2007, people are in a worse situation as far as the median incomes compared to the median home prices. And a lot of these cities, there's not really kind of like a great job market in them. And when everybody's kind of levered out that far. And another thing that, uh, you know, will protect, protect some of the financial institutions partially is, you know, back in that time frame, 07, 08, 09, if someone had like an FHA loan and they paid 20% down or they ended up with 20% equity, they could get to a point where they wouldn't have to pay, you know, the mortgage insurance. The mortgage insurance would drop off. Now they kind of changed the laws where if you have an FHA loan, the mortgage insurance is there for the life of the loan. So unless you refinance it at some point, then you'd be on the hook for this mortgage insurance and stuff like that, which makes your payment higher. Uh, so just everything is just more money, more money, more money. You know, the cost of everything is going up and everything. It just really chokes everybody off. So what's going to happen with a lot of these companies? A lot of them were zombie companies. A lot of them were able to kick the can down the road with some of the, the government money that got dished out uh, for the scamdemic and kind of gigs up. They're not profitable. Their core business has tightened up that much more and they're gonna have to, to whittle down through. Now, if you look at the, a lot of the hiring that happened in the last four or five years, and I've ran into this firsthand. I used to live, live in Tucson and you know, it was funny, every time somebody suddenly showed up new and they were saying that, oh, I just got a job at Raytheon, a lot of times they were a minority, every time, actually every time they were a minority or a woman, every time. I never ran into a white guy who just graduated with a computer science degree from University of Arizona that was saying, yeah, I got on it with Raytheon. I never ran into anybody like that. And so there was a lot of these, you know, these diversity hirings. And especially in the last couple of years where everything's gotten super woke, it's almost like, and you see that, you know, this with the Biden administration, it's just almost like they're just trying to be ultra woke. Oh, look how woke we are. We're gonna do, you know, a diversity panel and we're just gonna make them all women. Or we're gonna have this head of education, you know, it's, you know, it's a tranny. So. Um, you know, it's just, it, it, there's just been a big, big push. So all, a lot of these people that were hired based on that they're non-binary or, you know, the rainbow crew or whatever. And let's, let's just say they got hired and it's, you know, whether they're doing something or not in the end, when those people get fired, even if they're getting just as much done as someone else, that's maybe like a guy who maybe he gets fired too they're going to try to, they're going to, they're going to file a lawsuit. They're going to file a lawsuit. And they're going to say, I was fired, you know, because I was rainbow crew or I was fired because I was non-binary or I was fired because, you know, I started cross-dressing. Um, and they're going to file a lawsuit and it's going to take down a lot of these companies, you know, who aren't going to be able to afford the legal fees on top of the fact that their core business is withered away. Another one that's gonna be affected is gonna be women. And 
the reason I say this is because in the last, and I'm saying heavy, everybody's going to be affected. Obviously, like when we're going out there and we're seeing these egregious prices, we're all being affected by it. You know, when I was out in California paying over $7 for premium gasoline, I was affected by this whole thing. So uh, that being said, we're all going to be affected by it. But I think that women are going to be affected by this more and a lot of the diversity hires because then they'll enact a lawsuit uh, to say that, well, they were discriminated against. And, you know, it's going to be this multi-year battle that they're going to go back and forth with. On top of that, how many lawsuits are out there from people who didn't want to get vaccinated and then their companies were proactively getting rid of people who weren't adhering to this and didn't want to get the vaccine. There's a lot of lawsuits out there and it's encumbering these companies. It's, it's spending their money, it's spending their money, it's spending their money. And rightfully so on that and whatever, if you're non-binary and you want to file a lawsuit, anybody, anybody can file a lawsuit for any reason. It's not that hard. Um, and there's a lot of lawyers that might pick up the case, you know, for this reason or that reason or the other reason. So that being said, um, also a lot of the women, 60% out of the single people who bought houses in the last year, 60% of them were women, 40% were men. Now what's going to happen? If you look at any university, who studies engineering, who studies computer science? Usually it's men, probably 80 or 90%. So when they're trimming the fat and they need someone to, you know, do engineering program, do the hard coding, um, and then a lot of these jobs that maybe do the manual, it's, you know, maybe it's a manual labor job and stuff that a woman wouldn't typically take. When it comes down to the core and you kind of cut the fat out and it's not these ancillary jobs, kind of these like uh, support kind of positions, it is going to be a lot of women that are gonna end up losing this or that position. Uh, and a lot of people aren't saying this. It's an, in, it's an inconvenient thing to say. People don't like to hear this. And then what's gonna happen? Well, more women bought these properties and stuff in the last year, and guess what? Real estate's gonna collapse. They lose their job, real estate's gonna collapse. Guess what, they wanted to be comfortable, they bought a new car, they're making payments on it and then the thing unravels. So it's just, the, it's just the nature of the situation. What do you guys think about that assessment? Am I just, should I just be banned? Um, or do you see some validity in what I'm saying here? That being said, guys, hunker down, follow me on all social media, at Brian Phobos, YouTube, Instagram, Steam it, Twitter, Hive, D2, Friendster, MySpace, see you guys.